So all three synoptic gospels account for the criminals on the cross with Jesus. However, the story is not the same in all of them. In fact, Luke adds quite a lot of extra material. So the question is, is that a contradiction? And if not, how do we wrestle with that to find the truth? Recently, my son came up to me and, and he was reading in Matthew or Luke. I think he was reading in Matthew. And he, and he came to me and he said, Dad, I don't understand the, the way that criminals are addressed in Matthew isn't the same that they are addressed in Luke. Like, is this a contradiction? What should I think of this? And first of all, like, I was just overjoyed. Anytime, you know, if you have kids and they come to you with these kind of questions, even if you don't know the answer, just be grateful that they are even asking them. They're observing them in the Bible, and then they're coming to you, which is awesome. And if you are that person, just recognize the fact that you you notice those details. Like, that's that's unbelievable, right? That shows that you're really getting into the Word. Now, there's three ways that I want to help clarify what's happening with the text and just help you understand it better. And the first is this. You should understand that Luke is a historian, right? In fact, if you look at the New Testament, Luke, the Gospel of Luke, is the largest New Testament book. In fact, if you add Acts into that, Luke Acts, because Luke also wrote Acts, it's the same author, it accounts for a huge portion of the New Testament. See, he adds a lot of details and things where other Gospels didn't. So surely with all this extra text, we're going to find this throughout the New Testament areas where one gospel writer didn't add as much as Luke did. And you'll even see some of that go the other way. But the point is this. Luke was a historian who was originally writing to Theophilus. He's trying to lay out an account of the story of Jesus, right? And in that, he's going to pick certain things that he finds relevant and he's going to expound on them where maybe other gospel writers did not. And that's going to bring us to our second point, which is this. The Gospels are complementary, not contra contra contradictory. 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 Say that again. Contra cont Why is it so hard to say all of a sudden? The Gospels are complementary, not contradictory, which means that they complement one another. They don't contradict one another. At no point will you find that the Gospels actually contradict one another. And you're like, well, these stories between Matthew and Luke or Mark and Luke, they seem different. In one instance, the the thieves on the cross are reviling Jesus, right? They're getting in on it with the crowds. They're like, oh, if you're really the son of God, why don't you get down from here and take us with you? You'll notice that. And it says, take us with you, almost as if it's a plea. In Luke, we then see one of the criminals on the cross have a change of heart, right? He acknowledges that Jesus is the Messiah. And then he asks that as he pass over, that he take him with him, that he remember him in his kingdom, which is an awesome. There's a lot of theology there we could go through. But the point is this. They're not contradictory. Here's an example that might kind of help drive this home. Let's say you come over to my house for dinner and there's two other people there. Tomorrow night, you're coming over for dinner. There's two other people there. They witness you being there. We all have dinner together, right? One of them might go home and tell his wife, yeah, uh, someone else came over and we had dinner and it was a fun time. And the other guy might go home and tell his wife, yeah, someone came over, we had dinner, and then we watched a movie. It was a really good time. Well, which, which one was right? Well, they both were if we had dinner and watched a movie. It just happens that one individual didn't bring up the movie. Maybe he didn't think it was relevant. Maybe he got caught off track. The point is, just because one story has more to say about something doesn't mean the other story's wrong. It just means there's more detail. And that's exactly what we see happening time and time again in the Gospels. It is complementary, not contradictory. And that's great because what that allows us to do is expound upon the Gospels, to hear more of the Word of God, to see and to be able to develop more theology and learn more about the stories and the histories of what's actually happening here. All right, the last is this, and it kind of goes hand in hand, but I think it's important. Eyewitness accounts can be different, but still be correct. And if you ask any detective or police officer about this, they'll attest to it, right? If you, Even if you watch movies and you'll see that a lot of times they separate eyewitnesses, not because they're concerned that that's a criminal necessarily, but because they don't want them to collude and get the same story. See, when you talk to someone and you start to clarify things with one another, your story begins to come together. But if I separate people and I ask this person questions about event and this person questions about event, they're both, if they're not lying, are going to give me the real story, the same story, but they're going to have different details that actually help me develop a better story. In fact, what some people will initially see as what they want it to be a, contradic a contradiction, the atheist will tell you, oh, that's a contradiction, but it's actually the opposite in the sense that it's proof for the Bible. That's not really an opposite. The point is this. 
it's proof for the Bible. See, if all of the eyewitness accounts, if all three synoptic gospels or all four gospels were exactly the same, well, that would leave you to think that there was collusion. See, detectives, when they're interviewing people, if the stories are exactly the same, word for word, it's the same thing, they go, well, it seems like they colluded to make this up. We don't see that in the Gospels, and that's a beautiful thing. So what we actually see in these differences between the Gospels isn't a contradiction at all. In fact, it's complementary, and there's a lot of beautiful theology that can be pulled apart from that. So I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any more questions.